In the past tutorial we have seen how to build a flight controller of the full Arduino based drone. The construction of this drone will have three parts. In this part we will see how to build the radio transmitter and receiver. For that I've used a second hand old radio controller, Arduino and the NRF24 radio modules. This controller could send up to 32 channels, each of 8 bit values and a distance up to 1 kilometer. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back! To build my radio controller I've used this second hand radio controller. I know that using a controller to build a controller sounds stupid, but this one it's an old crystal oscillator radio controller. It works at 35 MHz and it doesn't even have the radio receiver. That means that I can't use it, so all I need from it is the case and these awesome joysticks. These are high quality joysticks and they have no dead points and move very smooth. Are made with these big potentiometers and a very nice result system that makes them move very well. It is very important to use a very good joystick when flying a drone. Ok, so first we will build the transmitter. Let's look directly at the schematic that we will mount. We will use an Arduino as well, but this time I've used the Atmega chip directly on a PCB. But you could use the Arduino Nano as well, the connections are the same. If you use the Atmega chip on a PCB, you should first burn the bootloader to it, if the chip doesn't have the bootloader. For that you have to connect the chip on the breadboard and make these connections with the crystal oscillator and all the needed components. Next connect the SPI pins from one Arduino Uno. The pins are digital pin 13, 12 and 11. Also connect digital pin 10 from the Arduino Uno to pin 1 of the Atmega chip. Now open the Arduino IDE and connect the Arduino Uno to the USB. Go to examples and open the Arduino ISP example. Upload this code to the Arduino Uno. Now go to tools, programmer and choose Arduino as ISP. Next go to tools and click burn bootloader. You will see that the Arduino Uno LEDs are blinking. Once the bootloader is uploaded you have to use the FTDI module to upload your sketches. Links for these modules are in the description. First add a 0.1 microfad capacitor between pin 1 of the chip and the DTR pin of the FTDI module. Next connect 5 volts and ground and the TX pin from the FTDI module to pin 2 of the chip and the RX to pin 3. Now connect the USB to the FTDI module. Open the blink code and select the COM for the FTDI module. Now upload the sketch. As you can see the LED on digital pin 13 blinks. That means that we have successfully uploaded the code to the chip. Now we can build our transmitter. If you don't want to complicate your project too much just use the Arduino Nano. Ok, so we know that each joystick has two potentiometers, one for each direction. First we should supply 5 volts and ground to all of the potentiometers. We connect the middle pin of each potentiometer to analog pin A0, A1, A2 and A3. Next I want to add two extra channels to this controller, for that I supply 5 volts and ground to these two switches as well. I connect the middle pin of each of the switches to digital pin 4 and 5 of the Arduino. Now we should connect the radio module. I've used this NRF24 radio module. The links for all the parts are in the description as always. Before we add the radio module we should create our 33 volt supply. For that I've used this AMS1117 33 voltage regulator to drop the voltage from 12 volts to 3.3 volts. This is because the NRF24 module works at that voltage. Also we have to add a 5V regulator for the Atmega chip, but if you use the Arduino Nano you should make only the 3.3 voltage regulator. I know that the Arduino Nano already has the 3.3 voltage regulator, but that can't supply the amount of current that the radio module needs. For that you should use an external voltage regulator like I did. Both schematics are in the description below the one with the Atmega chip on the PCB and the one with the Arduino Nano. 
Ok, so now we have connected the 3.3 voltage regulator to the NRF radio module and the 5 volts one to the Atmega chip. Remember to add the decoupling capacitators to both voltage regulators. To supply the entire board I've used the battery pack that the old controller already has with a voltage of 12 volts. Connect this directly to the 5 and 3.3 voltage regulators and add the decoupling capacitators. I have also used the switch that the radio controller case has to turn on and off the controller. We make all the connections of the NRF module for the SPI communication and we are done. These are the SPI pins of the module and here is where we have to connect them. The radio module that I've used for the radio transmitter is the one with the power amplified antenna. The transmitter needs a powerful module to send the signal far enough, but the receiver could have the normal PCB antenna type. So I recommend you to buy the antenna one for the transmitter and the normal one for the receiver. Ok, so almost all the connections are done. Now we should connect the wart pins to the PS2 connector that the case has, so I could program the Arduino without opening the case. Ok, so all we have to do now is to program the Arduino for the transmitter. The code is in the description ready to download. I've used the NRF24 library that you could download and install. The first thing that we do in the code is set the channel pipe for the radio transmission. This same pipe should be in the receiver as well in order to work. We will see that later. We start the radio communication. Now in the void loop we read each of the four analog values of each potentiometer. Also the digital value of the two switches. The Arduino ADC has 10 bits, so the potentiometer read will go from 0 to 1024. So using this function we will map the values to an 8 bit size, so we could send the data with the radio connection. The digital read of the switches will be a boolean 0 or 1 value. This radio module could send up to 32 different 8 bit channels. In this case we will send only 6. I create the data and send the value. That's all, the radio transmitter is done. I close the case but without the screws till I finish the receiver as well, so I could test the controller and make sure that everything works ok. So now let's go to the receiver. In this case I've used the Arduino Nano. All we have to do is to connect the radio module and solder everything on a drill PCB following this schematic. In this case we have to add just the 3.3 voltage regulator between 5 volts and the NRF24 supply, because the Arduino Nano already has a good 5 volts regulator. To supply the receiver we will use the same 5 volts from the electronic speed controller as in the flight controller case. Next I solder a male pin to digital pin 2, which is the PPM output signal that will go to the flight controller. Now to program the receiver I've used this code. Download it and open it in the Arduino IDE. This part of the code is all the configuration for the PPM signal interrupt. You don't have to change anything here. In the setup we open the radio channel using the same pipe code as in the transmitter. In the void loop we receive each pack of data and map the received values. We receive 8 bits for each channel, that gives us a maximal decimal value of 255. But in the previous video we talked about the flight controller range. So we have to map these initial values from 0 to 255 to a range between 1000 and 2000. You remember that in the flight controller we have set the minimum command to 1000 microseconds and the maximum throttle to 2000? Well, this is why. Ok, so finally we create the PPM signal using this timer interrupt. The maximum channels of the PPM signal is 8, but we will send only 6 on digital pin 2. Ok, upload the code and we are done. All we have to do is to test the communication. We have two options. One is to connect the digital pin 2 of the receiver to an oscilloscope. As you can see, here is the PPM signal with 6 channels. When I move the joysticks the position of each channel varies. That means that the transmitter and receiver works. If you don't have an oscilloscope, download the receiver test code from a link below. This code will print the received values on the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. I upload the code and open the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. 
I set the baud rate to 250,000 and see the received values. Each column is the value for one channel. As you can see, I move the joysticks and the values change. All we have to do is to fine tune the middle position of the joysticks. They should be on 127 which is the middle value of 8 bits. I tune the joystick using this manual fine tune. Both receiver and transmitter are ready. I upload the receiver code once again and we are done. Remember to solder pins for the 5V supply, PPM output and ground in order to connect this receiver to the fly controller. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one where we build the actual drone. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with your friends. That will help me a lot. Also, subscribe for more videos like this one. If you consider helping my projects, also check my Patreon page for more great projects. Thanks again and see you later guys.